In this special video, we'll be revisiting the top 5 recipes from 2023, so grab a snack and thank you for being part of this incredible community. Let's make 2024 even more flavorful and fun. Today, we'll be preparing one of my favorites, the Shrimp Toast Skagen. While it's enjoyed as an appetizer most of the time, it can easily serve as a full meal during the summer periods. And please bear with me, as I've recently moved, resulting in the use of very unconventional containers. So you might spot me using a frying pan for shrimp and dill, for example. But hey, let's not that distract us from the delicious food we're about to make. So without further ado, let's dive into the recipe. Begin by peeling the shrimp. We need to remove the head, the shell and the legs from the body. It's not a very fun process to look at, so let's fast forward. Next, we need to rinse and chop a bundle of fresh dill. Once cut, toss the dill into the frying pan and turn your attention to the onion. Divide it into four sections and then dice one of these quarters into smaller cubes. Now for the bread. Slice your loaf into your preferred thickness. I prefer it on the thicker side. Now we can move on to making the skagen. In a bowl, start by combining 2 deciliters of mayo followed by 1 deciliter of creme fraiche. Add 1 deciliter of sour cream and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Next, what we need to add is the dill and the shrimp. Mix the ingredients thoroughly. Then taste for salt, pepper and cayenne. The skagen shouldn't be spicy, but you should feel something on your tongue. Before we move on to the bread, please consider subscribing to my channel, it helps me a lot. Ok, so moving on, it's time to toast the bread. Heat oil and butter in a pan. For a slightly healthier alternative you can use a toaster, but I highly recommend the flavor that comes from using both butter and oil. Then fry the bread until it's golden on both sides. Then all that's left to do is the plating. Start by placing a slice of bread on your plate. Put two lettuce leaves beneath the toast and then add the skagen. While I usually incorporate the red onion into the mixture, I'm serving this on the side this time for someone who doesn't like red onion. Don't forget to include a wedge of lemon to press on top of the skagen. And that is it for the classic toast skagen, but we're not done yet. If you're feeling adventurous, try a variation by adding smoked salmon and freshly grated horseradish on top. It fits so well together. And yeah, there you have it. Let's make some homemade candied almonds. In this recipe, I'll also share my secret how to make them extra tasty. So these are the ingredients you will need. 125 grams of sugar, 2 grams of cinnamon, 200 grams of almonds, and 50 grams of water. Start by pouring the water into the pan and then add sugar. Once the sugar is in, you can add the almonds as well. Fire up your stove to a high setting and start stirring. I thought I should mention that if you have any suggestions for recipes you want to see me make, please leave a comment down below. I happily take on requests. As you can see, when the water evaporates, the sugar will become like a coat around the almonds. Don't worry if it starts to look a bit dry. When the sugar reaches the right temperature, it will start to melt. Since my channel is new, please consider subscribing for more mouth-watering cooking-related videos. Once the sugar begins to melt, it's time to add the cinnamon and my secret ingredient, a pinch of salt. This will give the almonds a salted caramel taste to them. You will need to act fast after adding the cinnamon and salt because the almond can easily burn at this stage. And here's the hardest part. Be patient and allow the almonds to cool completely before tasting. Remember, they're super hot. And there you have it. It's very simple to make and it's great for a quick snack for the entire family. One tip from me is to chop up some almonds and use them as topping on ice cream. It works really well with vanilla ice cream. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. See you soon! Autumn is the season for stews and I went on a hunt for a real classic. What I found was the beef stroganoff. 
I have a few tricks up my sleeve to make this extra tasty. It's a low effort, high reward kind of recipe, so join me as I prepare an autumn beef stroganoff. So first let's work on the onion. Remove the top and the root from the onion, then split it in half. Lay it on the flat side down and slice the onion into smaller strips. Repeat this for both onions. Next we need to wash and cut the mushrooms. Remove the stem from the mushroom, lay the flattest side down and cut the mushroom in the middle. Turn it over and slice it into bite-sized pieces. Repeat this for all the mushrooms and then move on to the garlic. Peel, crush, cut in half and finely mince three small garlic cloves. And whatever you do, do not throw these scraps away. Put them in a container or a plastic bag and throw them in the freezer. It makes for an excellent homemade low sodium stock base. We've made it to the meat, so let's start preparing the sirloin steak. It's quite easy. Take some cling film or baking paper and a heavy object. Place the paper on top of the meat and think of someone who made you sad or angry during the week. Then you give the meat a few good punches until it's even and tenderized. Then we cut the steaks into long strips. And we can move on to start preparing the stroganoff. If you have a cast iron pot, this is another great time to use it. Add some oil and wait for the cast iron to get hot. We start by adding the mushroom and onion to make sure it can sweat a bit in the pan. Once the onion is translucent and has softened, we can add the garlic. Mix the vegetables around to not burn the garlic. Let it go for a few minutes and then you can add the tomato paste. Before we take the vegetables off the heat, let the tomato paste bloom a little bit to make it sweeter. Then we can move on to the meat. Add some oil and butter in your cast iron pot. And once the butter is melted, you can add the sirloin steak. We don't want to overcook the meat at this stage. So just let it quickly get some color on all sides and then you can remove the meat from the heat. Next we add some water and concentrated veal stock to the glaze the pot. And then we add the onion and mushroom mixture. We will now go in with heavy cream, mix it to combine and add pepper, paprika and cayenne spices. Now is also a great opportunity to taste for salt and before we add the meat back into the stroganoff, consider subscribing to my channel. It helps me a lot. Let's add the meat back into the stroganoff along with some ketchup. Now it's very important to reduce the heat to low because we don't want the sauce to split whenever we add the sour cream. At this point I thought it was lacking in the salt and pepper department, so I added those, and then for the unusual ingredient, dill. If you can find fresh dill, use some of that, but dried also works. And the last thing we will add to the stroganoff is a teaspoon of Dijon mustard along with a teaspoon of normal mustard. And you know, that's it! A lot of people serve stroganoff with cooked buttered pasta, but I prefer to eat it with rice. Spoon a lot of stroganoff sauce over the rice and enjoy this rich and robust beef stroganoff. If you're still here, smash that like button to let me know that you watched all the way to the end. And check back later for more cooking related videos. Imagine making a chicken cashew stir fry that's both yummy and easy on the wallet. You don't need any fancy or expensive equipment and the steps are easy to follow. Let me show you how to make my chicken cashew. First of all, let's begin by preparing the 225 grams of chicken to allow it a minimum of 50 minutes to marinate in the sauce while we're preparing the vegetables. Start by trimming the chicken to remove any unwanted pieces. Then cut the chicken into long strips and place them in a clean bowl. After using the cutting board, remember to switch it for a fresh one to avoid cross-contamination. Do the same with the knife you used. In the bowl with the chicken, add 10 grams of cornstarch and 15 grams of light soy sauce. Mix the ingredients thoroughly, ensuring that all the chicken is evenly coated with the marinade. Now let's prepare the vegetables. Take 80 grams of mushrooms, 
Remove the stem, cut them in half and lay them on the flat side down. Slice the mushrooms into bite-sized pieces and set them aside for later. Next up, take 40 grams of spring onion, remove the root and separate the green and the white part. Cut the white part into bite-sized pieces and chop the green part slightly smaller. Now we need to take 20 grams of red chili, cut the stem off, split it in half and then into quarters. Slice the chili into bite-sized pieces. Grab a medium-sized onion, around 110 grams. Remove the top and bottom, cut into two pieces, peel the skin off and then cut the onion into wedges. Now we're going to work on the bell peppers. Take 75 grams of green bell pepper and 75 grams of red bell pepper. Remove the seeds and slice them into long strips and then into smaller bite-sized pieces. Now for my favorite ingredient, the garlic. Peel 20 grams of garlic by lightly crushing them and remove the skin. Mince the garlic into fine pieces and set aside for later. And last, we need to prepare 90 grams of cashew nuts and set them aside for later. Now we need to prepare the sauce for the stir fry. And I'd like to begin by saying if you like your stir fry on the more saucy side, double these measurements. Take a bowl and add 50 grams of water. Add 5 grams of fish sauce, followed by 3 grams of dark soy sauce. Then add 5 grams of brown sugar and lastly 20 grams of oyster sauce. Mix all ingredients thoroughly to combine and set aside. Now we can finally get started with the cooking. Take a wok or another large pan that can hold all the ingredients and add peanut oil to it. Heat the stove to a high setting and wait for the oil to become hot. Now it's time to add the cashews and toast them until they're golden brown. Remove the cashews from the pan using a slotted spoon or try and save as much oil as possible. Next we need to add the garlic and chili, but be careful during this step since the wok is hot and the garlic and chili doesn't need much time in the pan. Remove the garlic and chili and add the mushrooms and the white part of the green onion instead. These two ingredients can withstand a lot more heat, so cook them on a high setting, allow them to char slightly. Since my channel is new, please consider subscribing, it would help me a lot. Once they're cooked, but still crispy, remove them from the heat. Now add a bit more oil and add the marinated chicken. Fry the chicken until it's cooked through. When the chicken is ready, reintroduce the onion and mushrooms, then add the garlic and chili. Next we need to add the green part of the spring onion, as well as the red and green bell peppers, together with the toasted cashews. Stir all the ingredients together and add the sauce we prepared earlier. Since we used cornstarch in the chicken marinade, there is no need to add extra to thicken the sauce. Expect some smoke because the pan is very hot, so ensure that the fan is on. Keep mixing the ingredients until the sauce has thickened slightly and then you can turn off the stove. I recommend serving this dish over white rice or fried rice, but noodles can also work depending on your preference. And you know, that's it! A chicken cashew stir fry. Easy homemade takeout. My family's Porter Stew recipe is rich and hearty. It's also ridiculously easy to make. Cut up some veggies, put them in a pot and let it go for a few hours. It's almost like having a cheat code to get something this tasty with so little effort. Please follow along as I share my family secret Porter Stew recipe. First of all, we need to prepare the vegetables and the meat. So start by peeling three carrots, slice them down the middle, lay them on the flat side down. Slice the carrot down the middle again to create quarters and cut these quarters into bite-sized pieces. Next, we need to work on the onions. So dice two onions into cubes by removing the root and the stem. Cut the onion in half and lay it on the flat side down. Then slice the onion crosswise, turn the onion and continue dicing into cubes. Now we need to peel and finally mince four small garlic cloves. 
We've made it all the way to the meat, so let's start by preparing the beef knuckle. You can also use shuck or another similar piece of meat. Start by removing the net. Afterwards, check if the meat can be broken down into smaller pieces. It will be easier to manage that way. Cut the beef knuckle into steaks and trim away any unwanted pieces. Then what's left to do is to cut these into chunks. And whatever you do, don't discard the trimmings. Instead, save them and use them as base for a stew or making stock. So we made it all the way to making the stew. So if you have a cast iron pot, this is a perfect time to use it. Add some oil, some butter, and then wait for the cast iron to get hot. We add the meat in stages, not to overcrowd the pot. I fried mine in two batches, for example. We also need to add color to the onions and carrots. After they've been sweated for a bit, you can add the garlic. Stir the vegetables for a moment, but be quick. Prevent the garlic from burning, then add 5 deciliters of porter beer. Once that's done, you can also add 6 deciliters of water, followed by the beef and its juices. So before we allow the stew to simmer for at least 3 hours, there's a few more ingredients we need to add. Begin by adding 3 tablespoons of black currant jelly. Next, we need to add 2 deciliters of port wine or black currant concentrate, half a deciliter of light soy sauce and half a deciliter of dark soy sauce. Now we can also add 6 dried juniper berries and 6 peppercorns together with a teaspoon of thyme. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Now it's time to cover the pot and simmer the stew for 3 hours over low heat. While we wait, how about you hitting that subscribe button? It would greatly help me since my channel is new. We can of course also check in on the stew. When the beef is falling apart almost on its own, the stew is ready. The small pieces of onion will have merged with the sauce, making it thick and robust. All that's left to do is to add some cornstarch along with 1 deciliter of heavy cream. This step is optional and you can substitute the cream with water if you prefer. Now is also a great opportunity to taste for seasoning, so add salt or pepper to your liking. I'm serving this alongside golden mashed potatoes, but you can also enjoy it with rice. And that's all 5 of the recipes already! If you have any requests for recipes you want to see me make, please leave a comment and cheers for a great 2024! See you again really soon!